Hello everyone, my name is Andy, I'm the creator of Event Horizon Gaming and today we're gonna talk about the new upcoming Immortal Codex that's gonna come up soon. So uh, specifically I'm going to talk about the Soul Cadence fight. So the upcoming Immortal Codex uh, featuring Soul Cadence is where you will have to block enemies from uh, reaching Soul Cadence. Uh, which makes defenders as well as some specific fighters with lunacy visor important. Um, I'm gonna throw up a picture on the screen that's going to specify and maybe make you visualize easier how the fight is going to look like. But basically, um, Soul Cadence or the Hellfire Emperor will summon monsters that will try to move towards him along a specific path and these monsters will gradually lose HP and upon dying they uh, will deal damage to Soul Cadence but also restore HP to the nearest hero so this alone will make for some interesting synergies alright so for this fight um, defenders uh, using defenders is a must and uh, this is why I decided to create a video in which I can pinpoint some important heroes that can be of really good use in this upcoming Immortal Codex. And uh, besides that, uh, I've mentioned some uh, certain fighters that are going to be good with Lunacy Visor. In case you don't know what Lunacy Visor is, Lunacy Visor is, going to, is an artifact that can be equipped by fighters only and uh, increases block by one and uh, whatever the fighter deals damage to one target he gains uh, about 0.7% of, of um, max HP stacking up to three times so this is going to be useful if you have some fighters that um, you've built up and you don't have enough defenders in order to clear up the stage or go as high as possible um, besides that, mainly you're going to focus on, on uh, defenders. Uh, one highlight of this defender class should be, of course, Prokir. Uh, Prokir is a hero largely considered to be the best defender in the game, uh, so this is an obvious choice. But uh, similarly, most uh, legendary defenders can do um, the job based on their higher stat lines alone. So uh, another uh, thing that I want you to keep in mind is also avoiding certain fighter builds for defenders. So I don't know if you know, but for example, Captain Reef can be built a little bit more focused on attack and uh, dealing more magical damage with his ultimate. Cyrus can be focused a little bit with attack speed and magical damage since he has a very high range and supposedly can uh, peel for himself. So uh, it would be more than useful if uh, you ic try to stray away for this type of builds uh, for Captain Reap, Cyrus or Orim uh, or even Constants. Because all of which can be built as uh, high cost fighters focusing on their offensive abilities. But as long as you for example focus uh, on or you try to build them defensively with a lot of HP and uh, defense. Um, this uh, shouldn't be an issue. So, another interesting mention will be Azor. So, um, as uh, you well know, even though Azor is kind of unpopular in other areas of the game, um, he makes an interesting choice for this Immortal Codex because he's also uh, useful for the Cyrus Immortal Codex gaining damage from his defense as well as having an area of effect attack and can boost the damage of your other allies and uh, this kit that he has besides being useful in um, the Cyrus Immortal Codex is going to be useful here as well in the Soul Cadence fight because that means that besides him being useful as it is you can use the defense gear that you have on him and that saves a lot of uh, HP gear that you can use for other defenders that can greater benefit from this type of stats. So this alone can provide a lot of value, especially if you didn't have the time to farm 
gear rate 2 or um, even gear rate 3 who knows so um, Azor can be an interesting choice for this uh, for this fight um, if you have Toridor as well if you have Toridor this uh, can go decently well with Azor even though you don't want to build him with uh, with uh, attack based uh, build but Toridor is going to provide a lot of um, area of effect control uh, with his stuns and uh, if you have him in an invigoration set is going to increase the attack by a percentage but that doesn't really matter with defenders it's it's uh, highly niche and uh, situational but uh, if i were you specifically for this fight i would build even toridor with a normal defender build that's going to lower the intake of damage okay next would be uh let's see regulus and uh, our mr king hearts here are also going to be pretty good for this fight uh king hearts especially for his uh, lord bonus that will provide uh, quite a decent amount of shielding for allies from the same faction this can go pretty well with uh, brokir and uh, let's say if you decide to use some fighters in conjunction with your defenders regulus can provide some extra peeling for those but uh, depends on the positioning that you're going to be allowed to uh, use in this fight as far as i could see the positioning of heroes is rather spread out so the regulus ult wouldn't be as efficient as it normally would so this is why uh, it's not the first choice so um, yeah, uh, what, I, uh, what I also wanted to talk about uh, were also epic defenders because this game has a lot of high value epic defenders. Um, some uh, standout epic uh, defenders would be for example uh, Olag. Olag is, uh, isn't a great choice only because he is a great tank, which he is, he's a really good tank. Uh, but he's also one that you're going to get for free from Void Rift, which is amazing. And uh, what uh, what I was talking about before with the Azor using defense gear that uh, would uh, free up some HP gear. This is the type of defender that you can use some HP on because he will gain um, tremendous amount of shielding based on his uh, his base HP. Um, so uh, yeah, Olok is going to be amazing if you are going to build him with, with a lot of HP. Another uh, another good epic hero that's going to work in this fight is going to be Isolde. Um, similarly to King Hearts, she has uh, quite a bit of shielding that she can provide. So uh, she's also she also has quite an amazing uh, ultimate, the shield wall which increases block for every ally in range by 1 and applies physical damage reduction and magical damage reduction to them which is quite great if you again you are able to stack them up um, and uh, some other interesting choices for example I think Draga is going to see the light of day for the first time here uh, she um, can provide quite a bit of self peel which is amazing and she can also increase her max max hp and defense by 15 percent every time she uses her her ult um, and can also provide a little bit of uh, of buffing to surrounding uh, allies so uh, she might be a very interesting choice if you uh, if you have her i don't have her uh, i don't know if many people do but She's also Nightmare, so supposedly she's going to work well with Toridor, but this isn't a damage dealing fight, so uh, I think the best faction for this is going to be the Northerner faction. Depends on the type of heroes that you have. Okay, uh, another hero I wanted to talk about is Evelyn. So, uh, what's so special about Evelyn? Evelyn or Evelyn. <laughs> is uh, a pretty cool uh, pretty cool epic defender because he's able to block four enemies without a bastion ring 
um, allowing you to use uh, to use them for other defenders to increase the overall block. So uh, Avalon actually has quite some high stats for an epic with uh, passives that help uh, boost defense even further. So that alone is quite valuable for the Soul Cadence fight. Uh, also, what I wanted to mention about uh, about Isolde is uh, the fact that her ultimate is also uh, very useful with uh, an awakening that uh, increases attack speed on HP like the Glacier accessory. Um, she can deal some decent damage without sacrificing her defense ability and her lower bonus adds to her general utility. So uh, if you started playing a while back she was avail available through a shard event so always she's fairly widespread as well and could be worth investing in now to see um, to see more usefulness in, in the future. Again, um, I think uh, there is another one I wanted to talk about uh, and that would be Livian. So uh, Livian can be useful as well because uh, when fully awakened she starts in her ultimate which grants her a decent self-sustain and gives her physical damage reduction. She's uh, also noteworthy because she's, uh, she's one of the few options for uh, melee defenders in the piercer faction and can be integral in clearing the top level piercer faction trials. So if you decide to build her up for this event, you're going to get some more usefulness out of her in the future with the, with the uh, Pilsert Faction Trials as well. So uh, this is a double win situation, so to say similar to Isolde. Um, what else? Yeah, the fighters. So besides the fact that uh, Defenders Gang are going to be useful in this fight, uh, there are going to be some uh, in interesting mentions for the fighter scene as well, because we have some interesting fighters that are quite tanky. Um, so uh, a similar mention would be Abomination. I mean, Abomination is a fusion hero. Most of us might be already having him. So. Uh, he might be an interesting, uh, an interesting choice. <coughs> of course, with the lunacy visor, he gets three block, which is better than nothing. And of course, since a lot of folks have him, it would be a quite a good uh, hero to use in this fight. Um, and from the epic pool, uh, I think we have this Jankar Jank QR. I don't know how to pronounce it. You guys tell me in the comments below if you do. But uh, I can never pronounce this guy's name. The Pharaoh's Thrall. Okay, I'm gonna say that. Uh, <laughs> so this guy has been uh, shouted out by the community too for being quite a uh, well-rounded, tankier option of a fighter. Uh, with uh, the Lunacy Visor giving him a fairly unique advantage if built for HP and defense. And can, he can be viable and then repurposed as a fighter for the Esoteric Faction Trial. So this uh, option quite be, uh, might be quite, quite good in terms of uh, fighters. So uh, in terms of fighters, it really depends on the um, amount of heroes that you have and how lucky you got. Uh, there are, of course can be some other heroes that uh, might be good in terms of fighting. Heroes with uh, a lot of uh, sustain maybe, but um, yeah, this is uh, what I think is going to help you. This uh, uh, maybe in the future, if you guys feel like um, you would like to, I can create a guide, a visual guide on the Soul Cadence fight. But uh, as stated before, this video was to sort of prepare you for what's to come in the next uh, short amount of time. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. And uh, I don't know. See you soon. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe. This has been Andy, Event Horizon Gaming. Um, bye bye.